Does going legal really mean going legal? What's the difference between cannabis legalization and decriminalization? Today we're gonna to talk about the difference between decriminalization and legalization. I have with me J.D. Lauritsen and Blake Smith again. And guys, there's a, there seems to be a, a difference, but everybody, we're kind of confused about it, right? It seems like there's a lot of discussion about, oh, let's just legalize cannabis, or oh, let's decriminalize cannabis, but what's the difference? So there are two terms that actually get used interchangeably all the time, but they're very, very different. Decriminalization means you remove the legal penalties surrounding it, right? So you no longer prosecute people. You no longer jail people for it. Usually it turns, in, turns into a civil fine. You just fine them for it, right? As opposed to legalization, which makes it legal for you to possess it, consume it, produce it, all under a well-regulated market. And you can do that in one of two ways, right? You can have an adult use market or like we have here in Utah, uh, a, a medical market. And so those two terms are distinct. Now, what we have going on currently is there is a push to decriminalize at the federal level, right? Which would be, mean to remove cannabis entirely from the Controlled Substances Act and then leave how, how legalization occurs amongst the states up to the various states. So if you wanted medical like Utah, you could stay medical. If you wanted adult use like California, you could go with adult use. And if you wanted to not have any cannabis at all, you could continue to go that way. But by removing it from, from Schedule 1, it does a whole bunch of really important things. First, of all, first off, it's removing the criminality around it and letting people out of prison and helping people to clean up their records and reassimilate into society. There's also things that would affect industry. But then there's also things that would affect research. And I can let Blake talk a lot about the importance of why removing cannabis from Schedule 1 is so important for research. Absolutely. I mean, one of the biggest challenges we have, especially with cannabis naysayers, I don't have any double-blind safety studies by the FDA that shows that this is efficacious for this. In fact, I'm going to just, I'm doing this. The Product Review Board in the state of Utah has come out officially and wanted to eliminate a whole bunch of conditions that are in law because they're like, I can't find the FDA study. I can't give you FDA studies because I'm not allowed to research it. And that's insane. As a scientist, the way we come to a determination around facts is by producing data and doing science, good science, peer-reviewed science, mm -hmm. right? And we in the science US- Science out in the open. Science out in the open. There are plenty of sources in Israel, Germany, uh, the Netherlands. There's more and more data all the time. Canada is starting to do tremendous amounts of data. We won't accept any data because it doesn't meet our conditions and the way that we've traditionally thought about medicine here. Okay, open that up for me. Give me the ability to generate the data to show that, yes. In your it, way, right? It, in, in your way, in an FDA-guided study to show that it is effective for epilepsy. To say otherwise is a slap in the face to every single person who is treating their kid or their family member or anyone else who knows that it works for their person. And yet we have doctors saying, nope, I don't see a data point on this. Yeah, it's, that's, a, it's offensive, quite That's frankly. what is so bizarre. Like 73% of my patients in the first six months of starting some cannabinoid therapy are removing other medications. They're taking less other medicines, including alcohol, from their profile. And then to, to go to another meeting or to go to another provider and have them say, oh, well, there's just not any evidence. It, kind of, it just boggles it's, it's the mind, mind right? It boggles the mind because it is so effective for certain people. And in, yet- In fact, I, I would even throw this out. We have almost more human data on cannabis than anything else as right. soon as they allow epidemiologists or encourage epidemiologists start running case studies on all the data we've collected for all, I mean, how many people have been taking cannabis in the U.S. since mm -hmm. the beginning of any legalization effort? I mean, we have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of points of data that we can start drawing statistical correlation on immediately. So, what, sorry, I'm what do you see? About that. Well, well, JD, what do you see yeah. happening? Right, like. We know there's some bills have been written in the written but not proposed or not public. They're out for comment now at the federal level. Uh, I guess take us through. Do you think that over the past seven or eight years since 2012, we've had a lot of progression? What happens from here? What's the timeline? 
I think at one time it was a question of if. Now I think we're at the place where it's a question of when. When and, and how, how, maybe. And I think the how is incredibly important. How we legalize cannabis absolutely matters. And that's why you see this. It's a, it's a very, it's a robust discussion that involves so many different things, right? Because cannabis involves so many different issues. It involves the research. It involves the, the you know, treating it as, you know, a Department of Justice issue as opposed to treating it as, you know, a public health issue and things like that. It, it, well, how do you we, put people what in do we jail? Do, for, do you yeah. put people in different programs if they're having trouble? And then also, too, what do, you, what do we do about industry? What do we do about banking? What do we do about the environment? How, how, we, how we produce cannabis matters, right? And legalization right. can control some of those things. But decriminalization is a very good start. I don't want to say that it's worthless because it certainly is not. Removing the criminal element from cannabis is paramount. It's a good place to start. So the state of Utah could keep themselves with a medical program and decriminalize cannabis. We need to stop putting people in jail for stuff that people are profiting from. I can't stress that enough. And the way you start that is through decriminalization. And then you decide, okay, is decriminalization enough for our state? Maybe it is. Maybe we want a medical market. Maybe we want an adult use market. That's why cannabis is in the great Petri dish of democracy right now amongst the various states. Some states are doing it better than others. Well, we learn from those. And so that's why I'm encouraged to see what's going on at the federal level is much more decriminalizing it at the federal level and then letting the various states decide what they want to do with it. Because I think you're going to see different ways and hopefully best practices develop from that. And maybe one day, yeah, full legalization is the, is, is the answer. But for right now, the way they are thinking about it at the federal level with what's been, what's been you know, brought forth in the draft bill, I think is very good. It's not enough, in my opinion, to just reschedule it because that doesn't do what we need. We need to completely remove the criminality around it and then decide what level of legalization after that is appropriate. It's a, it's a crazy world we live in where, you know, 10 years ago, we would have not been having this conversation here in Utah. It doesn't even seem like it would have been on our radars. And here we're talking about federal decriminalization and potentially moving towards legalization. There are 37 states, I think, with programs uh, in the U.S. states and territories, I think there are 42 um, or 41. With, with, me right. with medical markets? With medical yeah, markets. And I think, is it 18 now that I think maybe have adult use? I, keep, I, I lose track of, of all the states. But the it happens fast. Yeah, and the it majority of people, fast. and every time they do a poll, a poll about you know, decriminaliz decriminalizing or legalizing cannabis, it just continues to ratchet up. I think we're well over 60% now of the population, yet we continue to have it remain federally illegal. And the incongruence between what the states are doing and what the feds are doing, it just makes it really, really difficult. This is precisely the point. I love what J.D. just said about this. When somebody's brother was on opioids, I almost never hear a story, gosh, I'm really glad that they took this pharmaceutical product and they got my brother addicted. I mean, it helped with some of his pain until he was addicted and then overdosed and died or whatever, right? I almost never hear a story ever that said, I'm really sad grandma decided to use a topical on her arthritic fingers yeah. and she could play the piano again. Mm -hmm. But do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's just such a weird way that we have, have forced this into such a weird box yeah. when, when, I think the data is pretty clear, despite whether, whether people want to listen to it or not. What are my rights as a patient in Utah when it comes to, to cannabis in general? You have the ability to use it within the law, but if you use it outside the law, then you're, then you're just an illegal consumer. And then in decriminalized states, it's like, I'm not going to go to jail for it, but I'm probably going to pay a fine for it. And then in completely legal states, it's like, I'm over 21. I can consume as much, you know, as, much as the law will allow. Do so, any states allow public consumption? Uh, yes, uh, New York does. New York will allow you to consume cannabis anywhere you can uh, smoke a cigarette. Oh, wow. In Utah, though, you cannot, even if you're a patient, you cannot consume in public unless it is a, I think it's a, it's a life-threatening event. Yeah, like an emergency medical event. Right. Um, and that's defined in, 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 in statute. Generally, you're supposed to do it outside of public view in order to remain, remain to legal. Remain re legal. Mm -hmm. Be sure to check out our other video about packaging and what patients are required or what's the best practice um, as far as traveling with medical cannabis specifically in Utah. Make sure you're commenting below if you have any comments about what we're talking about, legalization, decriminalization. We want to really hear your opinion. 
um, about what things uh, you approve of or what do you want to see in the legislation. Mm -hmm.